You are now listening to a member of the Disney Podcast family. Head over to Disney Podcast Family on Instagram to see all the latest posts for this show and links to other great Disney podcasts. Welcome to another episode of Undisputed. Today we got three fun topics for you. We got uh, Disney's cookbook, the recipes for success or failure. We got Will It Be a Big Splash, the uh, armchair imagineering of Tiana's Bayou Adventure. And we're going to be closing out the show with Oogie Boogie's Nightmare, talking about what we may see for the Halloween event. And welcome for another episode of Undisputed. Uh, I am your host, Lewis. Uh, I am joined by today with a team that's ready to talk, ready to get mm. things going. Uh, Sean, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm great. How are you? Intro <laughs> part is always the Sorry. hardest. I'm just, what do I? Uh, <laughs> I am wonderful, my friend. Awesome. Uh, Kubrick, how are you doing tonight? Oh, fantastic, man. So happy to be here. It's been too long. We got great topics, great people to talk about it with. I'm ready. Awesome. And we actually have a guest joining us tonight. Um, you, those of you listening tonight probably know this voice from our Wednesday Live in the Marvel mm-hmm. Tribe. I'm going to let him introduce himself. I'm going to pass it on over. What up, what up, what up? Um, I'm honored to get to go along for the ride here. I have no pressure to do anything but just right? give my opinion, talk shit, and enjoy. Hey, say hi to all the moms. Can, can I say shit? Hell oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Um, and just, just chill. I don't need to say hi to moms. They, they know where I'm at. They, they, <laughs> they know how to reach me. They, yeah. they know what's up. So, But yeah, I'm, I'm honored. Thank you for inviting me to be a guest on the show. So. Awesome. Well, we are glad to have you, and you kind of hit the nail on the head. This show is all opinions. Uh, we're all here to say things we either want to say, everyone else wants to say what you may want to hear, what you don't want to hear, but the whole outcome is just to see Disney the way we all want to see Disney, whether it's good, bad, great, horrible, just share our opinions and views about Disney and hope Disney the best. Uh, with that, though, we got a new little segment that we're starting off with called Over Under. Um, that has been brought to you by Kubrick, so I'm going to turn it over to Kubrick to uh, – send us off with the uh, over under. Yeah. So over under, it's always a topic of mine that I like to do with various things, but this being a Disney podcast, it's only appropriate that we see what's overrated or underrated with things Disney. So what I want to do right now is explore the golden era of the animated uh, Disney movies. So I'm just going to present it to the group. We're going to go around the horn. We're going to say if it's overrated, underrated, or it could be just right. It really could be. Like I've said before, there could be those unicorns that are just the perfect movies. So we have five movies right here. We're going to start off with the one that started it all, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. So overrated or underrated? I'm actually going to kick it over to Lewis. I want to get your opinion on it. What do you think? Overrated, underrated, or just right? I think it's I think it's underrated. And the reason I say underrated is because the fact that Snow White is a princess that does not get enough exposure, whether it's in parks, stuff like that. But at the same time, just the when you watch that movie itself and you see what the animators were able to do in such an early stage of animation, I don't think it gets enough credit, especially being the first princess. I think Sleep Beauty and stuff like that gets a lot more credit than they deserve. But I'm going to go underrated on Snow White. Interesting. Okay, Actually, I'll kick it over to David. David, overrated, underrated or just right? Say it's overrated. Um, it's, I, when I saw that, when I saw that movie, um, I really think they did it backwards. Um, it should have been the the seven dwarves found some weird chick in the woods. Um, and, but they went with they went with this this fairy tale story. Um, it just didn't for me. It didn't survive the test of time. I, a teenager I, I, too. She's a teenager. Yeah, they find grown. Yeah, seven seven grown men, hard workers, doing their thing. Much more interesting of a storyline and stuff. 
that they just didn't explore. And it's about this weird teenage girl who, you know, threw a tantrum. And so, yeah, over overrated. Sorry, gentlemen, that's just me. I'm a rookie. That's just gentlemen, me. I don't think we could have gotten a more accurate, summarized version of the story we should have gotten <laughs> than what we just did right now. <laughs> so we got one under. We got one over. Sean, what do you think? Overrated? Underrated? Oh, oh damn. I was, I was all set on, on underrated. Because I really like what Lewis said, but then David, you know, spits that fire and like makes a lot of really good points. I mean, but um, I think I'm going to stick with the fact that's underrated because of what it because of what it's done and what it. I mean, literally, it started everything. If you really think about it, that's where money came to start the Disney company by creating that movie. That's the pillars on the, you know, the the dwarves are the pillars on the uh, building in Burbank. So I mean, it's. And they just don't get a lot. I mean, they have a small ass little ride at Disneyland, and you know, and then you have other stuff, you know, Sleeping Beauty Castle and Cinderella Castle and all these other damn cats. Snow White is, you know, yeah, like David said, a young kid with seven older men living with her. But I mean, that's strange, but um, underrated, definitely. So I would say, for in, in, in Disney terms, underrated. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Can I, I want to change my answer. <laughs> Redacted. Redacted. Oh, well, okay. I'm just going to go. It's just right. Because <laughs> okay. I mean, David brought some good points. I mean, so I'm going to go. I'm going to go just right. Are you really changing? Yeah, I'm really changing. Really <laughs> yeah. Because I mean, we can't take the that factor out of, out of the story. I mean, yes, animation. Yes, it started it all. But at the same time. I agree. I think they got it backwards. The dwar- without the dwarves, that movie's born. So exactly. So I'm gonna go. It's just right. And can can I add just one more thing? I'm I'm not changing my Please. answer, Please. but I just want to add a little bit. Can you just just imagine this with me? That's all. They created a Star Wars movie just about C3PO, right? Knowing in the Star Wars universe, there's Darth Vader, there's the Luke Skywalker's, there's all, but it follows C3PO. Mr. Polite Android Weirdo Robot throughout the whole movie. They they promote C3PO toys. They do a C3PO. Tra- I mean, and you're like you're missing the ball. It's it, it's now this overrated thing because you we don't we want Darth Vader. We want Luke. We want Yoda. We want the jet. So that's that's for me is why I'm defending its overratedness because it was done backwards. That's all. No, that's 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 perfect. I like Do you that. remember what? Does anybody remember when Jesse Katzenberg or uh, renamed the Baker on Basil Street to the oh, Great Mouse Detective? Yes. Yes, I, I want to see David go through like the Golden Era and rename all the Disney movies. Oh, I'll rename shit absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So, yeah. what are you, Michael or Kubrick? Uh, you just changed your name on me, so I was Lieutenant, like, Lieutenant, Lieutenant. You're good, Lieutenant. man. Kubrick, Michael, Michael Kubrick. Oh, it's got a nice ring to it, but I Michael digress. Huber. Personally, I think that the film itself is underrated. I think with what Lewis had said, the animation for what they had at the time, I think it still holds up. Um, but maybe they did miss the mark on a few things, took some creative liberties with things in order to make uh, you know, a box office hit. But I don't think they knew what they had until it was presented. I think they were sweating bullets the entire way, thinking this is not going to make any money. And then, boom, it just flew open the floodgates. Right. But that that's just me. You know, I think it's underrated. And I definitely don't see you know, it getting as much love in the parks as I think it does. I mean, you know, it has a ride, but I never really see anybody like just not as much as Peter Pan does um, or lining up to meet her at a meet and greet. But that's just me. And if anybody disagrees, please, this is why we're here. Because she's weird. That's why you don't want to meet her. Or <laughs> she's, she's I did, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, even story. the character, the character is weird. Like when you meet the pair, you know, yeah, I understand you have to have that weird ass yeah, we she little voice, but if, if no. she existed today, she would be a Karen. I mean, she's yeah. a little weird. She's have you guys <laughs> ever seen? And I just watched this the other day. Have you guys ever seen the rap battles on YouTube? Yeah. Oh my gosh. There's Those a rap. There's a rap battle. I will send oh. it to you, Kubrick. It is um, Elsa versus Snow White. <laughs> oh shit! It's, it's going bad down. ass. And then oh, that's, that's just the down, start Elsa. of all of these. And I think her name is Whitney Avalon who created these. I just watched them like over the weekend when I was here at work because I work really hard at work. And um, <laughs> it, uh, 
I, it just popped up on my YouTube as watches. So I watched that. And then they had Katniss Everdeen versus Hermione. And it's just like all these different things. But the I will send it. The, the, I'll put the link in the in the thing. But it's so good. The Elsa versus Snow White. is It's just the best. So sorry. I didn't mean to go off topic. No, it's oh, okay. No, you do you're good. She kills with the lie where she says, you're just a princess? I'm a oh, motherfucking queen. queen. <laughs> oh, <laughs> right there. Sums it up. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's so bad. I'm like, oh, shit. And that's, yeah, that's shit. Yeah. Awesome. And I'm not going to lie. The Elsa character. I wish people could see the look on his face when he said that, folks. She just oh, comes, she, it, I will put that in the thing. He it's, said yeah. she's definitely underrated. Oh. Yeah. All right. Oh, don't even get me started. Dave, David, that's David's favorite movie. It's Frozen. So yeah. that's. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you can just see whole, the enthusiasm on his face. That's a whole other topic. Okay. We have four more of these. Let's go. Yeah. Well, I mean, we can even do a couple of them and save some for next time if y'all want. Because I feel yeah, like I... we can just take up the whole hour by doing this, but I don't want to bogart the whole thing. The next one that I have is Pinocchio. Overrated <laughs> or underrated? And I'm actually going to go in reverse this time. Sean, overrated, overrated. underrated? Overrated. Oh, wow. He had that. In the <laughs> I can't stand Why? Pinocchio. I can't stand it. It's a dumb movie. It's it's weird. It's um. Give me talk about weird. Uh, it's a, the whole idea of going to the island with the, the. It's just, I don't know. It's overrated. Everyone loves Pinocchio, and I'm like, eh. And, you know, I mean that's just me. I I. You talk about movies that have weird weird undertones and we that's a discussion we talk about is that, that movie has so many weird ass undertones it basically talks about kidnapping and st- you know and i just think it's overrated and everyone is pinocchio is great yes tinkerbell tinkerbell or not tinkerbell no I'm no i'm thinking peter pan sorry the fairies in that um but jimmy cricket that's i'm sorry i just think of jimmy cricket jimmy cricket's kind of cool but the whole story is just weird man no it's overrated for me david all right I think it's just right. And, and here's, I, I'm going to have weird takes tonight, so just forgive me. But I, I think what Disney created here, this was a a, a, a a soft gateway into watching creepy horror movies. This is, <laughs> this is the perfect setting for children. Because Pinocchio is a creepy doll, it is. It just, it just. The premise is, um, you know, the fears we see today with with Chucky, Annabelle, all that stuff. That's always existed in our recesses and stuff. But Disney did it just right to where that creepy factor doesn't, it, it, it doesn't overtake the movie, and it, it's played out with comedy and love and the story and all that stuff. So it, it's a gateway drug into horror. So the kids who watch it. They low, they later in life become horror movie fans. Just like, call Pinocchio. Just <laughs> call Pinocchio gateway drug. Yes, they are the gateway to horror movies. They were my first gateway, my first introduction to creepy things in, in a realm, and then it just took took my imagination off. So yeah, just right. It was just right. Nice, nice entry. Yeah, I actually even sometimes forget how many creepy elements are in that movie because it is kind of sugar coated with all the oh it he's is. trying to be a good boy. They're trying to let your conscience be your guide, and then if you drink a bunch of beer, you turn into a jackass and put the lotion on, guy. trying to be a good boy. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the lotion oh on God. the skin. <laughs> what about you, Lewis? I, I'm gonna agree with David. Uh, I think it's just right, but I think it's just right because the storyline itself is absolutely just bonkers that they went with a storyline like that at all. But the characters they've created, Jiminy Cricket, Pinocchio, Honest John, Gideon, you know, all of those guys, I mean, there's just the character development in there are characters, the voices just work with the characters. Those are characters that are gonna really stand the test of time because they just have that perfect balance so for character development and the way it looks i think it's underrated but storyline is where it's overrated and that's why i'm sitting mm-hmm. in the middle i think the character development really saves that movie because the storyline i mean really why is geppetto in the ocean looking for pinocchio like it doesn't make sense like you're just like what happened so storyline doesn't make sense but character development absolutely amazing yeah, it doesn't make sense. I mean, this is the story about a puppet who was wish, wished to life. So yeah, you know, and he's what he should have floated and, yeah. gets, and gets eaten by a whale. That you know, and that's the thing. That, that was that was Jaws before Jaws even was a thing. <laughs> Again, it was a whole movie thing and stuff. So it's the gateway. It was a gateway. All right, 
Gateway drug. Pinocchio's Definitely. gateway drug. <laughs> that's the one takeaway from the segment. That's it. I think that's the name. I think that's the name of the show. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. Well, last um, week it was Mickey Mouse Runs America. So I mean, we gotta have, we gotta have good the titles for the show. Hell yeah, we do little taglines on that yeah. one. Um, let me see. For me. Yeah, I'm going to say just right, actually, because I'm trying to think of ways where it's over. And they took a lot of creative liberties with the story. I mean, even just the character Pinocchio originally was not a likable character whatsoever. And I mean, it's like it still isn't. Yeah, but I mean, I, he, he, he killed Jiminy Cricket in the original story. Like he smashed. Oh, shit, really? so, yeah. yeah, it's a much darker, darker story than what the movie even showed us too. And I mean, it's so associated with Disney too. I mean, you know, when you wish upon a star is iconic and, and its own right. And we wouldn't have gotten that if it wasn't for this movie. Um, you know, I may be a little biased because honest John is my favorite Disney villain, but I think it is just right. And for its time, I think it's pretty well. Um, all right, the next one. This one I'm actually really interested to hear everybody's opinion on. So Fantasia, overrated or underrated? Uh, David, one more time. Uh, overrated. Oh. I'm going to... Uh, actually, you know what? They, there, there was a lot that could have been could have been done with with this and and it, it formed a lot of different things um and i'll be honest it, it really kind of really solidified that that mickey mouse is a, is a boss ass so i'm gonna say it, i'm gonna go just right i'm, I'm i take that back it's, it's just right that's all okay okay and you stand by that i'll okay. stand by that yeah okay i think it's underrated personally um, because I know that Walt had bigger dreams for this. I heard that he actually wanted to implement smell in the movie theater somehow, like with the flower scene and everything. He had much bigger ideas for what it actually turned out to be. Um, and when I was younger watching it, I'm like, what kind of movie am I watching? Here? Right. I wasn't mature enough to appreciate the different segments that they were trying to incorporate with this classical music. Um, and talk I don't really talk still- about a drug. I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> like I was sitting back and I was like, who put this shit in my apple juice? You know? Yeah, really, no doubt. Right? Going on here? But yeah, and I also don't think it is as recognized as other, you know, as the other uh, movies that we've just already discussed. Um, and I really don't see people mentioning it in their top 10 favorite Disney movies. Because um, in a way it is, but it also isn't because of the intellectual property. But I'll say underrated. Um, Sean? What I'm, you gonna got? Say ju- I'm gonna say just right. I mean, it's right. it's a decent movie. It's okay. I mean, without it, there would be no Phantasmic. So that Phantasmic is like my favorite thing. So that's why I would say it's it's just it's just right because it it, let, it was the gateway to Phantasmic, which is the coolest thing at Disneyland. Rest in peace, Murphy. But you know, it's it's all good. But uh, yeah, it's just right. It's it's a good movie. It's not something like it's just not in my top ten. I'm not going to rush to watch it. Uh, it's it's weird as hell. I mean, you know, I agree with what you're saying. Like, why is this part of this? Why is this part of this? Why are there brooms dancing? What the yeah. hell? You know, There's but no I guess storyline. There's no yeah, story. there, yeah. No. But Pinocchio, no. there isn't either. Pinocchio sucks. So I mean, it's, <laughs> it is what it is. So you know, yeah, he was Lewis. hurt by that one. He's. The- <laughs> I'm not really. Yeah, not a fan of Pinocchio. Sorry, but Lewis. I think it's underrated. Um, mm-hmm. It reminds me of like Hot Topic selling Nightmare Before Christmas stuff. You got all these youngsters that <laughs> rock, they rock Jack and they've never seen Nightmare Before Christmas. Mm-hmm. Everyone loves Fanta- uh, F- uh, Sorcerer Mickey, but they really don't know where he comes from or who he is. Mm-hmm. Uh, so for me, I think it's underrated. Not only that, it being only the third film out of Walt's running, like, and you go with Snow White, a princess story. You go with Pinocchio, and it's a very different story. Your third swing out the gate is Fantasia, which is basically – a lot of just sounds and visuals. There's no storylines like that's a huge risk to be taking. Mm-hmm. Um, and so for me, I think it's underrated based on the fact that it's a huge risk and the fact that everyone rocks so- Sorcerer Mickey, but I feel like probably half the people that know Sorcerer Mickey couldn't tell you where he's from. Yeah. I completely I agree. agree with you. I completely I agree. agree with you. On he's that, from Phantasmic. Sure. Obviously. Yeah, from Phantasmic. Yeah, that's exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, one quick pop quiz. Who was originally supposed to be the Sorcerer's Apprentice? Does anybody know? The Joshua, Sorcerer's Joshua would know. 
I think it's supposed to be Donald. Yeah, I was no. going to say Donald Duck, but... No, actually, it, it even blew my mind here just real quick. It was actually supposed to Goofy. be Dopey. Dopey. Wow. <laughs> that would have been, yeah. okay, been, been awesome. Man. I mean, it would be yeah. good. Been but, awesome. but, but the reason being was that they were worried that uh, Donald was getting too much popularity over Mickey. So they needed to find a way to put Mickey back on top without being mm-hmm. overshadowed or, you know, killing Donald's career in a way. Would have been hey, interesting. Though. Yeah. I'm going to save that for Josh and see if he knows that. <laughs> Make sure you ask him before the podcast, though. Yeah. <laughs> Disney probably missed out on a whole bunch of – uh, a doper fanboys if they did do- if they did dopey as as the sorcerer and stuff. I mean, all the Jerry Garcia, all the swag. Nice all, he would be a, he would literally probably be a four twenty icon and stuff. Oh my god, they did yeah. that and stuff. So, so Blood, bloodshot eyes and everything. Yeah. How does dopey <laughs> conduct Fantastic though? He's just quiet. He's just all sign language from the top. <laughs> <laughs> just doing his thing up there. He don't care. <laughs> wow oh man all right we'll rapid fire these last two ones all right okay uh dumbo overrated or underrated sean man that's <laughs> dumb it's all right it's just right it's dumbo <laughs> i mean the only thing i take from dumbo is the song when she sings the little baby mine song i think oh. is the best part of that that's just it's all right it's all right I it's just there. It's just there. I mean, it's a cool ride at Disneyland that, that that the kids like to ride on and wait way too long to go on. But I mean, it's just Dumbo. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. Lewis. I'm sorry. I don't mean to sound. No. 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 Yeah. You're fine. Lewis. Same thing with the same thing with the last one. So I mean, when you asked me the last one, so I, I think I think Dumbo is highly overrated. Oh. Mm. Just yeah. that's it. <laughs> I mean, it's 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 one of those things where it's like Winnie the Pooh. No one actually knows. Or have seen the fucking movie Dumbo? They're just like Dumbo. Oh, he lost his mumber, mo- his mother. It's like that's all you know. Like that, nothing else. Not Timothy S. Mouse. None of the characters. Like that's all. All right. Yeah, it's overrated by a long shot. You're not going to talk shit like, about Winnie the Pooh, are you? You weren't. I am. You, weren't, you, you weren't going there, were you? I mean, kind of, kind of. He oh, pumped Winnie, the brakes. Winnie the Pooh's a badass. Him. I'm not gonna lie, <laughs> David. I'm gonna say overrated. Um, Dumbo, his his character, his personality is the manifestation of of a fourth grade bully. He is literally everything that a bully would like clown on you on, like you big ear, goofy dude. He is that. He's like if you had to paint a picture of all of the the verbiage that a bully would say to hurt someone's feelings it would come up as an image of dumbo so <laughs> overrated yeah <laughs> Woo, damn um i'm just i'm gonna say i feel <laughs> the movie's underrated um i don't feel like a lot of people know too much about it i'm surprised nobody brought up pink elephants i mean that is yeah. pure nightmare fuel when i was growing up um but yeah, I think it's underrated. Nobody really knows anything other than just the title character himself. They don't know any of the support. They don't know any other songs. So yeah. All right. The last one, which I think is probably, I think I know where everybody will go with this one. Bambi, overrated or underrated? Lewis? Overrated. Why? Except, okay, so overrated, why? Because it's, there's, there's nothing to that movie. The only good part of that movie is Thumper. And, that's and about it, really. That's oh, it. To God. You're the, honestly the, right. <laughs> the, the most credit Bambi's ever gotten was in the film Sandlot. Like, that's it. Like, Oh, my God, the Bambino. The, yeah, like, <laughs> I think it's highly overrated. I mean, yeah, it's a sad movie, but it's really not that good of a movie, in my personal opinion. I, I've watched it with my kids more recently, and they're like, what is this? And I, I almost want to ask myself, like, I forgot, too. Like, it's... It's it's a nostalgic movie, but I think it's overrated. Okay, that's fair. David? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, okay. The movie should have been over the minute uh, Mom got shot. It it was... It's overrated. Um, I agree with with Lewis. There's nothing there. Um, It's not like... I mean, Over the Hedge was everything I kind of wanted Bambi to be. A kind of revenge of the animals movie. I didn't get that. Bambi was just this nice little 
documentary to show what artists can do with with you know furry creatures in the woods and it just it, it was it was really a nothing burger for me so yeah a nothing burger <laughs> nothing burger a nothing bambi burger nothing oh, bambi oh, burger delicious oh, bambi. Mm. <laughs> Sean, do you stand by what you said about the last movie with this movie? No, actually, I, now that I, th- I think about it more, it is very overrated. It's, <laughs> it's, uh, um, I agree with Lewis. The, the, the highlight of the movie is Thumper. Um, obviously, everyone else agrees that because there are no attractions at any Disney parks, I don't think, that are revolve around Bambi. No, I, am I wrong in that? Am I wrong in that? There's no, no I, mean, I, know. I mean, honestly, no. what, would the, what would the attraction be? Chase the Hunter. Yeah, you you, you got to catch the hunter. I mean, that what <laughs> honestly, that's what the ride would be. You're oh on, shit, Bambi's you're on Bambi's day. back, just riding yeah. out, chase the hunter. Yeah, that's it. It's it's overrated, and like I, I said, mean, there there's the Bambi attraction at Disneyland. What? You know the shooting range in Frontierland. Oh, my oh. <laughs> <laughs> you can and send, Bambi you can send all hate mail to sunken city designs at gmail.com. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, Bambi's man. a really long, long gun control commercial. So <laughs> I was gonna say Bambi brought to you by the NRA. <laughs> no, be the opposite. The yeah, opposite. Yeah, you're that, right. I'm sorry. Yeah. 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 This is where you can dub in that song where you're adopting a puppy. Oh, oh my gosh! In the arms of the world. Yeah. Well, it would have made more sense. It would have been, yeah. It really is only thumper. It really is. Yeah, I mean, yeah. flowers just half baked for like two minutes of the movie. <laughs> Sleeping the rest of the time. Right. Yeah, that's it. Kubrick, that's how about fun. you? Kubrick. Um, Kubrick yeah, I think I think it. I think it can. Yeah, I could see the case being overrated. I mean, I haven't seen that movie in years i, I agree to, i haven't either you know i no i love i enjoyed it when i was a kid but there wasn't really a whole lot of takeaway to it it was pretty much just a nature documentary um <laughs> that was it i think of any of these I, I i can honestly say i haven't seen any of these in at least five five to ten years any of these five movies i i don't uh, snow white pinocchio and fantasia Fantasia, not so much, but Snow White and Pinocchio well, probably like- run to Disney Plus in my house probably once every four months. Okay, sorry. All of rotation there. I'm sorry. All right, gentlemen, that was it. That was overrated or underrated. Thank you for humoring Thank me you. through that. I really appreciate it. Try to get something better for us next time. That was better. That was great. That was <laughs> yeah, that was solid. <laughs> we learned that. <laughs> what did David say? Bambi's the, what did you say? What, wait, d- what, Dumbo's? Wait, who's the 420? Oh, you, oh, you Dopey and Fantasia. Dopey and Fantasia would be the four yeah. twenties yeah. nightmare. I mean, yeah, the, do- the Doper boys. The Doper yeah. boys. Yeah. Doper boys. Uh, all righty. So let's get into our first topic: Disney's cookbook. So a little bit about what what sparked this was uh, obviously the release of Little Mermaid, and there's a there's a, a, a I'm gonna say there's three different fan bases, and just hear me out for a second. There's the fan bases. That are for this movie, no matter what Disney did or didn't do, they're excited for it. Mm-hmm. There's the there's the complete opposite fan base that saw everything Disney did, whether that's the music, the character development, the storyline, whatever it is, the the budgets, all those pieces that just were against it as soon as they said it was releasing two and a half years ago. Yep. Then there's the the party, and I and I would like to assume that that's all of us here where. We want to see it be the best, but we want to see Disney hold themselves to the highest standard of whatever that may be. What? So for me, I have not seen it yet, so I can't critique anything outside the trailers. Me, there are things that I don't like about the movie, but I, there are things I don't like about this movie and all the live action movies. One, I think we've shared it here a couple of times. I don't like the cookie cutter approach that they do, where it's just a carbon copy of the movie. Um, but... I want to get your guys' feedback, not necessarily just on The Little Mermaid, but I want to, what are ingredients that are Disney's using these days that we feel are working or not working for them? But also, what are some things that you feel are not working that are until working? David, you shared something earlier today that I hope we could touch on because I think there's a lot of things working that the average fans don't see. But I want to get your guys' views on what's working for Disney right now and what's not working for them that used to work for them. And I'll leave it open to whoever wants to start. 
Well, I, I think one thing that's working is exactly the opposite of what you said you don't like, um, which is very true. I mean, uh, live actions are are a thing of Disney. They're not going to go away because this is why right here. That movie's mm-hmm. made a couple hundred million dollars in two weeks yep. um, because it's because it's out there, because it's 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 known. It's something that you're familiar with. I mean, they're doing a Toy Story 5 that's been actually been confirmed because yes. people are comfortable with it and it's and they want to see it. Um, that's mm-hmm. why you have all the IPs in the park because this is what people are. Uh, so it goes against what you're saying, Lewis. But I think that's one thing that Disney's doing that is absolutely uh, from a business aspect. It's brilliant. Um, and we touched on this last week a little bit that I, I can't remember what we talked about, but I, I kind of got teed off because you'd said that. You, you want things changed, but then you don't like the way they, that, that they don't like the way things are changed. People go with what they're comfortable with, if that makes mm-hmm. sense. Yeah, no, I, that's, that's human I nature. Thought, I thought The Little Mermaid was really good. The, the, the new movie was really good. I definitely have criticisms of it. It wasn't the same criticisms that most of that were the conversation for the past two years. That was not even that wasn't even an issue for me watching this movie. I had more issues with what they did with some of the characters than what color they were or what race the, 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 the seven sisters were. I mean, that's, I mean, let's, let's be real. That's, that's what everyone wanted to focus on. I know we don't, we didn't want to touch on it and get into that, that much into it, but you have to kind of to talk about that because that's what everyone's freaking problem was. When I started Walt's apartment podcast, they had just announced that Halle Bailey was going to be Ariel. And like for the first few months, all we talked about was people bitching and complaining, that oh, yeah. that's not their Ariel. It's not going to be their Ariel. How can you do that to Ariel? How can you change a fictional character to something that it makes no sense to me that when not my, and I said this on our live, not my people are bitching and whining, not my aerial, not my, no one's an aerial because it's, it's a fake thing. Mm-hmm. You know, but I, that's completely off what you're getting at. But to answer no, your no, question, this, answer this your question exactly quickly, to answer your question quickly. The biggest thing they're doing to help themselves right now is giving you what you already know. Mm-hmm. When, when they give you something new, you're like, what the hell is this? Elemental looks good to me, but I've never seen that before. It, you know, um, Coco, when I first saw the preview for Coco, I'm like, what the hell is this? And then when I watch Coco, it's pro- it's probably my top one of my top five favorite movies. Coco is amazing. It's such mm-hmm. a good movie. Mm-hmm. But it's hard to go away from what works. I mean, why do you think the parks have the same thing in all of them? If you go to all different parks, they have the same rides. There's There's... There, there was three Splash Mountains. Now there's only one. Yes, we understand that. There's Thunder Mountain in pretty much every park. There's a Haunted Mansion in every park. Why? Because it works. And that's what they're pulling out of their cookbook to make it work and make you come back and want to eat more of it, which is fam- f- familiarity is the key to success for Disney. That's my opinion. And, and you mentioned that, that, that I shared. And yes, I'm all... But would you say that, like, for instance, how many of us here have seen Cruella? I have. I have. Right? Yep. Cruella was a beautiful movie, in my opinion. I think it was mm-hmm. well done. It mm-hmm. took something we knew and completely curveballed it up. Right. I think these live actions, if they were to do something like that, a lot of people don't like Lion King because it's literally scene for scene the same movie. Again, I have not seen Little Mermaid, so I can't. For me, well, a lot of people won't like it for that reason because it's it's pretty much a scene for scene with with the few additions. Uh, Beauty and the Beast, that scene yeah. where he takes her back to find out what happened yeah. to her mother, yeah. I thought that was a beautiful added piece. Like, mm-hmm. oh, okay, it's mm-hmm. something different. So for me, but at the same time too, and and this is one other one I was thinking. About, do you think that these live actions are just coming way too soon after another? Before it seemed like we got one every other year. And now we're getting some time. I mean, we just got Peter and Wendy last mm-hmm. month. Mm-hmm. Ariel's here. We're already in talks of what's coming next. Do you think they're rushing them maybe too much? Uh, but I'll come back to that because I want to hear Kubrick and David's uh, feedback as well. I mean, Sean, you, you summed it up pretty beautifully. And just we, we gravitate towards things that are familiar because mm-hmm. we know we grew up with them. And, Absolutely. of course, if we have kids, we're going to bring that up with them because it's also with a new generation and then hopefully they'll love it the same way that we did not exactly the same way but with a new twist on it and hopefully you know broaden the minds a little bit more um 
but again, I haven't seen the little mermaid. Um, I just haven't seen it just cause I haven't been to the uh, movie since my daughter was born, but I'm not really over the hill to see it though, just because of the rehashings of, these live actions. I feel like Disney's relying on it too much. Yes. It's a brilliant business standpoint and everything, but it's also like, we're kind of stuck in this purgatory of fans where we gravitate towards something familiar, but then if we're shown something new, we're going to hold it um, up against what we already know and love. And we may not be fair to it because it's not what we grew up with. So we won't accept it as it is. I do want to see the little mermaid. I'm just not breaking down the door to see it just because of the live action thing. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's been done to death and they're beating that dead money horse with a stick but it's still are you are you a fan of the original yeah no totally are you you lewis me yeah (laughs) (laughs) something well i'm 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 a huge fan of like secondary characters so because of flounder sebastian scuttle like Mm -hmm. i am i i'm not the biggest like main character type of fan Mm -hmm. um but i enjoy it um I have not went out to see it because Sean, David, you guys know, and I'm sure Cuba knows, the closest movie theater to me is an hour away. So it's like a five-hour event to go see a movie. That's the only reason why I haven't went and seen it. Um, But I'm not the biggest fan of the original just because it's the same princess blueprint. I'm going to guess. I'm going to make a guess right now. We can mark this down, whatever. When you guys both do watch it, I will say Lewis will hate it. That's just my opinion. And I I think Kubrick will love it. Because because ask just asking you those questions, I think you'll like it because I think it plays a great it plays a great service to the original, and a lot of these don't do that. Um, a lot of these, there's a few songs on here that you're gonna be like, why the hell did that happen? But um, you know, and we talked about it on our live show, but I, I honestly think that that's what I feel. Kubrick will like it, Lewis won't. You heard it here first, folks. Well, we'll see. I may, I may be wrong. And yeah, no, 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 of course. I like David, those experiments. Sorry, I may take over again, Lewis. I get excited. I can't. I can't just sit here all the time. No, it's okay. And that's what this. I, I love. I love this atmosphere where we're just sharing opinions and views because that's the whole title of this show is just really just throwing it all out there. Because there's viewers that may agree with some of us. There's viewers that may disagree with all of us. But it's just giving them a chance to have a platform where hey, they're thinking on the same wavelength I am. Yeah. I don't think anybody. I could be wrong, but nobody here is just wanting to see Disney fail. It's just trying to see. Disney be the best Disney they can be. But I'm gonna turn it over to David on that one. All right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna say this um disclaimer. This is my opinion and my opinion only. Um Disney is probably one of the biggest and the best drug dealers on the planet. And and the drug that they sell is nostalgic magic. And let me, and just just walk <laughs> just walk just walk with me here. Um, so, <clears throat> what Disney does, and this is the recipe that they use a lot. We wouldn't get like Lewis mentioned uh, Cru- Cruella, um, Sean mentioned Coco, um, and a few other original movies and stuff. We couldn't get those liberties because of, you know how it, it's very it's, it's very expensive to throw something new out onto an audience and stuff. It's a, it's a huge risk. Mm -hmm. That risk has to be supplemented by something. And when I say Disney is a big time drug dealer and they're peddling nostalgic magic, I am dead serious because here's the thing you guys, Disney's foundation is based on other people's stories that's already been created and reformatting it in the way that they can sell it to the masses. It's 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 almost like uh, if you ever seen that movie American Gangster, uh, Denzel Washington's character, he he has a conversation with Cuba Gooding Jr. and it's a very pivotal, very important conversation. It's a it's what I imagine Disney corporate would have to any newcomer who wants to take Disney in a different direction. Blue Magic, which is the drug that that it's it's already good. In, it, in the way it is. You don't need to change its name. You don't need to do anything. It's going to make money because it's good. Creating these live action remakes is a two for one for Disney. And here's what I mean. 
people who saw the originals when they were younger and stuff, right? There's this nostalgia piece. Uh, even if you're even if you're tired of it, most people, even the critics who who have been bashing it for two years since me and Sean did the decast and stuff, um, they they have to kind of see it so so they can be truly a, a critic and bash it and say that yeah, I'm speaking from I actually saw it, right? But not only that, people who saw the originals and they liked it. They're grown up now, and they have children. This is the two for one. So we got something that's new. We say it's a remake, it's a rehash, but for that little seven, eight-year-old, ten-year-old who's going to go see this, this may be their original for them and stuff. They may go see the cartoon. Uh, we, you know, uh, after this and stuff, they are getting a whole new audience, and and they're getting a two for one, and that's just they 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 baked in. Uh, you know their their generational hold that they have on people and stuff. And this audience, they're going to make. There's going to be a, a, a section. I, I kid you not. In another thirty years, there's going to be a remake of the a remake. Right? We're going to get another Ariel. Maybe that Ariel's from Mars. I don't know. Mermaids come from the planet Mars, and they fly into the water. And, and but it's not for us. It's for it's again that two for that ten year old, that seven year old today. And their children. And that's how Disney works. And so they know. I mean, here, here's the deal. People bash it for whatever reason they want to bash it and stuff. People hate uh, live action because they're shot for shot. It, it, and, and, and that's fine. Disney isn't really about fan service in that way. They're more about making money. They know what works, what brought in money. They don't want to deviate. They can deviate on, on new projects and stuff. As long as they're getting money and stuff, this this movie is going to make money. People who are already out there saying, "Oh, it's going to be a flop," they invested two hundred fifty million. There's another eighty million in, in promotions and this and that and stuff, dude. It's going to make its money back. It, this is the fastest way. What what other product on the planet makes this much money in this short period of time? None. New businesses, I don't care if it was Apple who introduced the brand new iPhone. It never made this much money this fast. Disney understands exactly what it's doing. And we are focusing only on the on the, on the, on the cinema dollars. We're not even talking about the merchandise. Uh, this new Ariel is about to generate millions upon millions. And yes, yes, movie dollars is a big bulk, but the merchandise pieces, um, that is that is kind of what sustains them and everything else. So if you add up and you look at all that on, on the financial sheet of Disney, they're winning. They won the minute that that week, that opening weekend was over. It, did, it They didn't need to make, you know, 180 million or $200 million for it to be success. Critics said they do because they, they're going to say whatever they're going to do and stuff. So I, I'm going to shorten this to this. Disney is the biggest drug dealer. They peddled nostalgia uh, magic and they do it very, very well, very effective, despite whether we're critics or we're fans and they get us all in the end and stuff. So, yeah, that's that's all. That's all I'll say. I'll end it with that. I'm going to add one more thing to that. <clears throat> Movie's been out for ten days. It's at three hundred and forty million dollars. Boom! Yeah, worldwide. I think. Hey, I think. I think they'll be okay. The formula works. Yes, yeah. in ten days. <clears throat> it's wild. Yeah, Lewis, what you got? Well, so listening to that, and and I was listening to the end part of what they were saying how they were winning. Um, I mean, looking at dollars wise, I mean, yes, it can be compared to other Disney movies that have obviously opened and have been way ahead where it's at. I mean, heck, Beauty and the Beast was at like 400 plus million at this point in time when in 10 days in. So, I mean, it's, it's still, but I think the biggest key thing that you shared though is the <clears throat> Disney's winning on. All right. Sounds good. Did he, yeah. you go, you don't, you don't agree. Ah, that was, so I think with that though, um, Disney winning. I mean, there's the there's a part of me that I think they're really winning, and that's the whole. Have we seen clips of the parks right now for that Ariel's meet and greet? And I want to say that Ariel, not because of anything color wise or size, but the live action to to animation. That Ariel's line has been solid packed, and for me, that's the one thing that I have been on the opposite end of is Haley Bailey's performance. 
I've seen clips and it's been solid. My biggest gripe on the movie is the live action part. But I think right now Disney's winning. Because but you honestly the- can't say that because you haven't seen it yet. So you really can't say that. I mean, I, but, I get that that's your gripe, but. But I mean, the clips that I have seen with, with like her singing and then versus the clips that have come out of the side characters, mm-hmm. the side characters haven't bought me since day one. Mm-hmm. And they're, but the clips that have leaked from D23, the clips that have leaked uh, Haley Bar- Bailey, those have enticed me. The the under under the water or under the water under the under the sea scene that's in the trailer, mm-hmm. that alone by itself I'm already involved. But I do like the way David said that is Disney's already winning by that. My thing that I'm worried about though is we're retelling stories and that's winning. But you look at the new stories we mentioned Elemental, not many people are excited to see that. Um, Strange World, not a lot of people were excited to see that. And those are the animation side, which at one point was the golden road for Disney. You can put an animation out and it's hitting. But when will we see something like another Frozen? Not necessarily another Frozen itself, but a story that just hits with all audience. I feel like Strange World, Turning Red, Turning Red, a lot of people like it, a lot of people didn't like it. But it for me, it was a, a, a lackluster story. So at what point does Disney look at, hey, our remakes are doing okay or excellent, depending on what market you're looking at. But at what point do the ingredients for animation movies get to the, back to that level? Because I'll be honest, I feel like the last handful of animations that come out, they've been forgettable. But I've watched some of the Paramount or DreamWorks films, and I'm watching those time after time again because they're comedy and good. But the Disney ones recently, the animation ones, have been really hit and miss and more misses and hits. And you're answering your you're answering your own question right there of why they keep doing live actions of the same things that they've already done before. Because you're saying that you're not liking what's gonna come up with new. So they're not gonna be like, okay, we're gonna listen to what Lewis is saying. But if we are going to another, go back to the well, if we give you another frozen, you goddamn well know all those kids are gonna be there in their Elsa dresses, and Andy will be there in his Elsa dress, you know, wanting to do big things and and you know. I get I get what you're saying, and I, I'm you're 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 this is what you kind of did last week when we talked too. Like you you talked about this, you you don't like the new stuff, so you're 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 feeding into the fact that that's why they keep doing like David said, going back to the well to make sure that they can make money on something. Mm-hmm. But yeah. it's not a bad thing that you're saying no, or that you're doing. Not. So at the same, if, if if your mom made amazing meatloaf right for countless years, uh-huh. and now it's not amazing no more, like what ingredient? has been changed while the animation's not working? I don't know. That's a dumb question. I mean, it's a, I mean, I mean you, how do you fuck up meatloaf? I mean, it's meatloaf. But <laughs> you just keep doing it. You just, it's meat and whatever you put in there. It's the same thing Disney's doing. It's, you, Disney's making meatloaf. It's the same damn thing all the time. Well, okay, so let, you, let, it, let, it's, let's ahead. use that analogy, okay? So my, mom mom makes meatloaf. That's her favorite thing. Do you put right, barbecue you sauce as, on the meatloaf? You as a kid, right? <laughs> No, barbecue? what the barbecue hell? Sauce I put barbecue sauce. I don't do ketchup. All right, I'll go. What? Wait, that's a whole other. Oh, wait, okay. All right, all right, all right. Let's 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 go now, back to the meatloaf thing real quick. Now okay? I'm hungry. Oh. Thanks. So meat meatloaf is is mom's golden original, right? It's the mm-hmm. go-to thing, right? But mom wants to expand your palate. She wants you to try some new different things. So during the week, she tries some different. She's gonna try to make some uh, Chinese food. She's gonna make talk. She's gonna try different things. It may not hit, or she may knock it out of the park. But guess what? She always has that meatloaf to go back to to keep her afloat, so she can continue to keep experiment, keep it introducing you to new things. That's how we got frozen. Frozen was a new kind of, hey, Taco Tuesday, let me try this. Oh, my God, it's amazing. Now mom has meatloaf and tacos. And this is this is Disney's formula. They keep trying. The, the, the stuff they go back to the well with allows them to try new things. And it may have a series of just fail, fail, fail. And guess what? When they, and they look at that on their spreadsheets, when they look at that, they're like, okay, we need to give them something that, that they've already had, that we found success with. So let's feed that to them and stuff. And that's what they're doing. And they and those those successes, uh, those rehashes, those retellings, those live actions help 
Disney a, a take um, liberties and try more experimental movies and try because one of those are going to hit, like you said, Frozen. That was a very brand new uh, thing, and it blew the hell up. They're gonna they're, they may get a chance to do that. If they don't, guess what? They're just gonna go back. We're getting live action Seven Dwarfs. I mean, it's meatloaf. just meatloaf, yeah, meatloaf. Uh, we, but we, it's funny you mentioned Seven Dwarfs because that's another live action that's in the works. Yep. I mean, it's not the and seven we're going to bitch about till we watch it, and we're all going to go watch it. We're going to have a bunch <laughs> of original <laughs> Disney movies in between <clears throat> now and then, and Disney is is hoping one of those is going to be a banger. But guess not. If if guess what? If they're not a banger and they're not doing good, well, we know Seven Doors are. It's in the Man, chamber. That's that's crazy the way you the way you explain that there about. I mean, the I, I, will give, I will give it to David. That was a nice analogy. I mean. So I, frozen is tacos. Okay. Got I it. will never look at frozen the same way. Uh-uh. Taco Tuesday. Taco Tuesday. Yes. Frozen. Kids, kids loved it. So what's meatloaf? Would that be like Beauty and the Beast and Little Mermaid? No, meatloaf is just kind of the remake. What? It's the formula. It's the yeah. reaction. And so they can experiment new things. And we discover a new Taco Tuesday. So Man. what happens with live action in Frozen? That's coming. I guarantee you that's coming. <laughs> I bet, what is it? What is it? Meatloaf or tacos? Then you're like totally confused. Well, okay, so so now mom has two things. Mom has meatloaf. Mom has tacos. I mean, that's all. That's really all Disney. Disney has a a, a bunch of go to, um, a hearty menu things that feeds our appetite, whether we want it or not. We know it's reliable. We know it's dependable. We know what it's about. It's that hearty meal that Disney has. Then they have a whole menu of those hearty meals mm-hmm. from us that they built over the years. That's fair all. enough. See, and and, the, and and I agree with everything you just said. I just my thing is, is you go back ten years ago. Remember when, like, say, Pirates of the Caribbean was in theaters. You had Cars in theaters. You had Marvel doing something. You had Disney firing on all cylinders. Like Cars was a banger. Pirates is a banger. Marvel was banger. Like they were all like Disney was just. And right now, it's almost like they have a deck of cards. Like all right. Who are we playing and how is this going to work? And so for me, it just feels like something that's in the ingredients book has shifted because it was at one point Disney was putting out films that and you were going to the box office every week because I want to see that. I want to see that. And now we're getting movies that are coming out and we're sitting there like Sean mentioned Elemental. It's like, yeah, that looks good, but okay. Like there's no drive for that. The live actions are getting people interested because you have the two parties. They either really want to love it, they really want to hate it. Um, but even you got Marvel and Star Wars fans, and I'm saving that for a special undisputed episode. But what something has changed in Disney where we're not fired on all cylinders like that no more. I like, agree. And I that's agree. The part that scares me. I agree 100. percent Disney had an era where it was back to your meatloaf was Gordon Ramsay. They were. Yeah just killing it they were top chef everything else and then now gordon ramsay is put out the pasture and now we we're in this we're in this kind of we have to recycle some menu stuff going back to my kitchen like hell's kitchen tokyo and hell's kitchen that that. yeah everything was fired the menu was fired everything they were putting out everything they were serving we're going back to mom's meatloaf then they tried hell's kitchen with kids and it didn't work so like we gotta go back to freaking Back to regular Gordon Ramsay. So you know what though, the, the mom's Milo analogy still works in that too, because my mom always tells me you're gonna miss my cooking when I'm gone. And I think right now we're missing Disney's cooking. Now that I don't want to say it's gone, but it's just been misplaced. Yeah, all I'm missing. thinking about right now yep. is the, the line from Wedding Crashers when. Will Ferrell's in his basement yelling for his mom to make fix him some meatloaf. That's all. I, I can't get that out of my head right mom, now. Mom, meatloaf! <laughs> meatloaf now! 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 I, never know, I never know where she is. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, did we ever see meatloaf? Did we see his mom in that? No, no, we no, we never did. No, we never did see his mom. Just him yelling at her. No, she, no, I'm sorry. She was in the beginning of it when he first walked in because she called him up. Oh, and that's then, right, yeah. Right. And then she's like, "Mom, meatloaf." <laughs> all, all I can think of is the viewers listening to this. They, the ringer, like, when the fuck do we get ice cream? Like, when the fuck do we get about meatloaf? Oh my like, god. If, that is, oh my god, that's if the you missed in that movie. If you miss the, the spot in this podcast and you come back, you're like meatloaf. Meat, what the hell? <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, yeah, so 
that line in the ringer. Where the fuck do we get ice cream? <laughs> that, was <laughs> that was amazing. Yes. So, so I, I think I answered my own question again. It's like I just want Disney to get back to Making that golden money. era, kind of going back to the beginning of the show when. No matter what Disney was putting out, it was entertaining for whatever it was. And I feel like right now, we're left... I mean, me. I'm left guessing where that magic went. Not that it's gone, because I hate you that say the magic is gone. It's not gone, but it's... You hate right saying it, but you say it a lot. Huh? You hate saying it, but you say it a lot. And I love I don't you say the ma- that. I don't say the magic is gone. I don't think the magic, the magic is, going is gone. Going, he doesn't going say, away. You say it's diminishing, or it's like it's, he doesn't no, say it's it, gone. It may oh. dwindle. It, it's never gone. Never yeah, gone. Yeah. Disney, baby. I'm, I'm not oh. paycheck. I'm not paycheck. Yes, I love you, Drew. <laughs> oh, oh man. So uh, we're just about gone. at our mark, our, our hour marker. So I'm going to switch it up a little bit. Will it be a big splash? We're gonna we're gonna tie that real quick about a fire round. So what I'm going to ask each of you is, what is a a cool thing that you would like to see in the new Tiana's Bayou Adventure ride? Okay that will make that ride just, I think David uses this analogy a lot, the chef's kiss for that ride. What do you think would be that, like, they did that, I'm in, let's go. Um, just because we're running out of time a little bit, so I want to go a quick round. I'll start with Michael. Uh, what's that that chef's kiss for you? If they did that to that attraction, that you'd be like, you know what, I'm signing off, I'm ready to go. I would really want to see the Shadow Man and the Shadows implemented somehow with the climax yeah. of when we go down. When we go yep. up, and then, boom, we drop Unfortunately, right Unfortunately, though, to, to counteract it, if you look at all the artist renderings and everything, that is not what's going to happen in that part. If you look at I'm, the – at the, at, I, I completely agree with you, by the if way. If they're listening, now's the right. time to change the course. But that's what I would Oh, they're listening. To. They're listening. Yeah. Oh, they're listening. Anaheim, Anaheim and Burbank, we have like one listen on each show. It's them. I know it is. <laughs> That's fine. Oh, that's mine. Yeah. Um, All right, Sean. Uh, it sucks because I completely agree with with Michael. He has changed his name to Michael. That's why I just noticed that. But um, I agree with him. But I mean, I don't know if I think once you hit the drop, I think you need to be playing "Going Down the Bayou" because I think that song is just so great. But going up the up the that's thing, you need. But but yeah. I, I know there's so much you can do with it. And I think what you're gonna see is Mama Odie at the top of the hill because that's what they're showing, like in the renderings and the models oh. is like the, all the lamps and stuff. When she sings "Dig a Little Deep," "Dig a Little Deeper" is probably one of the best songs. I listen to it probably on the daily. I just love that song. And and but but they're saying there's gonna be a lot of original stuff. I hope it's not too. And then we're again we're going away to the same kind of thing. Yeah. They're gonna. They better they better keep some meatloaf in it if that makes sense. I mean, if we're gonna go back to it, we need to have. I think two of Mama those three, meatloaf. Two of those three things need to be in there somehow. Yes. Uh, Doctor Facilier and one of those two songs somewhere. In my opinion, I think would just and really really good badass audio and animatronics. Yes, I, I I think we need that. I hope it's not all screens, but I think for the time frame that we're in, we're gonna see a lot of screens, which I really hope not. Yeah. Um, the renderings of this thing look amazing. I, I can't wait to see. I can't wait to see how it looks at Disneyland at night. It's going to be so cool. Fit in New Orleans Square like nothing else, I think. So I know we're going to miss Splash Mountain, but it's not. I, I can't wait for this. That's yeah. going to be. And it's it's due. It's time. Uh, Tiana, Tiana is probably one of the most popular princesses. And it's about time that she's getting representation in the park. So that's. I'm, I'm excited for it. I'm here for it. I mean, she got a lot of it in the parks too now with the, the restaurant and everything else they've done there. So good. Good on Disney. Give us that meatloaf we love. <laughs> you, Mama's Odie's meatloaf. That's what we need. Mama Odie's meatloaf. That sounds we good. need it. <laughs> Mom loaf. That's what it is. Mom loaf. Yeah. Mom. Mama <laughs> Odie's meatloaf. Mom. Mom. <laughs> <laughs> uh, David. Man, yeah, I, I can't disagree with these guys. I mean, it got the Shadow Man at the drop, the, the music choice to Sean was, I mean, only thing I could add, I mean, all these are for me is like Chef Kiss. The only thing I can add is just maybe an animatronic Dr. Facilier. Oh, God. And, you know, during that drop ride and stuff, playing, you know, friends on the put other him side. In the, put or, him in the two drop where you have the two drops where you get really wet. Put him in yeah, there so where just, it's dark. I think something the, the friends on the other side, the, the yeah. shadow man, all I, I mean that element and stuff. 
I would die for that. That would be amazing. Yes, now, sir. just a, qu- a, a question. I've seen, don't don't kill me. I've seen probably that movie four times. Not a lot. Like I've seen other movies. He's he's dead, right? And so is Ray. Yeah, yeah. He's that was dead. Ray, correct? Yeah, he's so, taken to the other side. So okay, yeah. but but Ray, the Ray is as well, right? Yeah. Is okay. Yeah. So I wouldn't mind seeing Ray as well. I didn't mean to cut back in there. Sorry, but that's yeah, I. Good. It's a good movie. movie. I think it's a good movie. I, that's gonna be fun. But with that, and actually, they can really play off the Shadow Man since it's a salt mine. Hey, he's back! Like he's his, oh. like he's got himself. He's the Shadow Man now, mm-hmm. and like he's and some of that. And I, I think the songs you definitely need to have majority. You don't need all the original songs, but you need those songs, and you need the Shadow Man because if not, I mean, that's my favorite Disney villain is the Shadow Man. And I think he's one of the most coolest, unique characters you've seen. Um, but you need him. Yeah. And I think, Sean, what you just mentioned, that double drop where you see Br'er Bear's ass. I mean, yeah. you can have the show man kind of like pop it yeah. out of like a, warp, a vortex or like that or however they do it. Yeah. And you need him. I'm, That's when I, you get soaked. That's when you really get wet on that ride is the yeah. second drop, yeah. not the last one. I yeah. would not be surprised, though, if what we're seeing Mama Odie be the top of the drop. All of a sudden, like she, celebration. I think it's she's at, or she's at the bottom, and they swip it, switch it up on us. Uh-huh. Because I, I mean, but yeah, me, they need the shadow man. Without him, what's the, what's the, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, you know how you have like, an altercation. You need somebody. Where's the conflict? Up? Where's the conflict? Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 Yeah, you need that, Lewis. What, what you not to interrupt, but everything's firing off in my head. Like, it was he really gone? Like, I can picture in the shadow man now saying, like, Y'all really didn't think I was gone now, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. As a part and of if they don't bring back the same actor to do his voice, I'm it's out. It's a disservice. It's a disservice. Yeah. I forget his name, but I can picture him in my head. His Thank voice you. for that, that was that's like Phil Harris to Baloo. It was just right. a perfect blend. Yeah, but uh, Can I ask yeah. you guys another question about that about about yeah. Splash Mountain. I'm going to add around the room real quick. Um, David, I'll start with you. What's one thing you like to see from Splash Mountain that stays in in this ride? The the water drop. <laughs> I'm sorry. I think they might keep. That. I, I hope they. I, God, I hope. It. God, I hope they keep that. I think they're keeping that. Yeah. <laughs> you just get all of a sudden they're like working out this little like so flat. Drop. You just. You're yeah. just like, you know, <laughs> hey, you, yeah, I remember though. I not, I told you guys this. I'm, I'm meh about about Spy right. Mountain anyway. Mm-hmm. So yeah. There's I, one I thing on there I would like to see, and it's the it's the. Uh, the ship, the, the the boat at the end. Oh, I yeah. feel like that's when, a given. when everyone's celebrating there on the end. I think yeah. that's a great New yeah. Orleans thing, and I hope that's all that stays yeah. from that from that attraction, from that ride, but, yeah. and the drop, obviously, David, for sure. But, yeah, there you go. Cooper, yeah. How about you? No, Man, I, it, I knew that'd be your answer because you've made you've made that very clear in the past. That that's it's. I don't you know, care. I know. <laughs> well, Cooper, you, how about you? The the riverboat would be great. I would love to at least see maybe a couple of the original animatronic me uh animals in there mm-hmm. somewhere maybe a small little easter egg or that but the riverboat would be iconic i mean yeah. that would be beautiful just to see in there too yeah i, I can't see them moving it anywhere else so either right. old animatronic sprinkled in there somewhere or the riverboat that'd be beautiful lewis how about you oh man for me i'm gonna be very honest i think it's the water smell the smell the, yeah the smell that the splash mountain water it's not gonna go anywhere. It's still gonna have water in it. Yeah, but I feel like like they can try to like because they're doing the whole uh, beignet smell in the the line queue. I feel like they're gonna try to dress up that water smell to really give like the salt mine vibe. So I hope that it's because there's not a whole lot from Splash Mountain. I mean, if I'm being real honest, what I would like to see you keep the tree stump at the top of the hill, but we know that's already gone for seeing in Florida. Yeah. That's but I think because there's not much on that ride that's like show ready to save i mean it mm-hmm. that i mean as much as i love that ride it's mm-hmm. it's not what it used to be it they had to go man and it, it was failing at the yeah, end it's, it's it's time. Time. <laughs> and honestly princess and the frog uh, uh, is if i had to pick an ip to base it off of princess and the frog is a like top five oh, absolutely possibly yeah. even top three i'm being biased on robin hood and jungle books i absolutely love those movies and they would fit clearly but if you're gonna do something i think Princess and the Frog is it makes sense. 
except for there's no hills in the bayou except for that one hill. Okay, but, Joey. Super hill, yeah. Okay, yeah, Joey. I mean, overall, though, Thanks, I just hope, I mean, it would be, if they're going to keep the logs, maybe the logs, that'd be interesting. Yeah. Because I'm curious. I mean, concept art says it's still going to be logs, but. It still looks like logs, yeah. 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 I think fireflies, all that all that New Orleans stuff, it's gonna be so cool. Uh, oh, it's gonna yeah. be beautiful. Oh, yeah. It's gonna be gorgeous. Yeah. And everyone has said that you can't do this in a year. You can't do this in a year. They did Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. It should break out in six months. Yeah. Um, yeah. so th- I know they can. And um I've heard rumors that Tony Baxter is part of it behind the scenes mm-hmm. helping still. So okay. Um Goodness. It's gonna be fun. I mean, I, I I can't wait for this thing. It's gonna be great. Yeah. I I can't wait for us to talk about it. Like looking back on this now and then seeing where it'll be. Well, this is another one of those topics that uh, you know that I remember when I was writing more for the Diz Insider. Uh, one of the first articles I wrote for them was when they announced that they were changing the that they were changing the theme. You know, mm-hmm. and and they it's. It's one of those things to finally see stuff that we talked about years ago finally come. I can't mm-hmm. wait for this. It's going to be great. And I'm going off topic again, but it's, you know. It's no, I think that's a solid way to close, though, because, I mean, yeah. that's kind of the premise of this show and what we're talking about is being okay with change. Sharing your opinions, your feedback and stuff like that is one thing. But to share your – force your opinions and force your feedback down others' throats. Say, hey, this is how it should be. This is how what it should be or what we should do or how we should do it. I don't think that's okay. I mean, because I've loved Splash Mountain, but I've loved Splash Mountain just because of the history and the stories that I've had with either my friends and family, so that. But I, at the same time, I completely understand the, the challenges that it faces on whether it's the movie, the characters, the overall uh, relevancy. I don't know if that's a real word. But so I think going off topic and sharing that stuff is something that has to be shared because – there are some fans that are afraid to share their opinions and they might have a better opinion. And there are some uh, fans that really shouldn't share their opinion. because They're just negative. So I think that is a uh, perfect thing to say. And we have plenty so, of time to talk about Oogie Boogie in, in the future. So, so, so I, I just want to say this, like in the future, when you guys do get the opportunity to kind of talk about that, uh, talk about this after it opens and there, invite me back because I set myself up for a win. So I can say like, see, told you they kept the water drop feature. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just say I'm winning, so just invite me back as a guest in the future. So. Absolutely. I mean, give give it your feedbacks today and your opinions. I mean, I think uh, I'm gonna be reaching out to you more often. Okay. Yeah. No problem. Well, we no problem. we do have a show set up and a, a little. We were me and Sean were talking about it about the DU crew and knowing how much of a Star Wars fan base is there, but also knowing how much of a Marvel fan base we have here. Mm. And me being myself, I kind of want to throw some questions around that are really going to cause some, why the hell would you say that? And uh, really just start getting your guys' opinions and feedback. Uh, But I'm working on that right now. So hopefully, probably not next show, but the following show gets it out. Beautiful. Love it. Well, with that, Um, guys, David, thanks for joining. Sean, until uh, next time, let's have a good time. What? You you just muffled out. Yeah, what happened? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, right, I was turning the music up. I said we have to ask David where we can find him in the future, you know, on the oh, internet. Yeah. Man, you oh, can I'm... you can you can find me anywhere but jail. So I'm I'm all over the place. <laughs> look up the blurred hulk. I'm a, I'm on TikTok. That's where I like to hang out a lot and do stupid stuff that entertains myself. It's weird. I didn't realize I have an audience. I do it. I thought TikTok was like a personal diary. So right. I go in there and act like a clown. But apparently people like my shit and they follow. So, so check me out on the Blurred Hulk and just, yeah, that's where you can find me. But I, I have 999 followers on TikTok. I just okay. need one more. No, you should change your TikTok <laughs> name for Hunted Mansion. Just the name. <laughs> but yeah, Kubrick, where can we find you? Um, you can find me at the Toontown Fight Club, man. Yeah, hanging out there. Happy tuning Tuesday tomorrow, y'all. Thanks for having yeah. me. Anytime. And with all the comments today, you can find me at Big Papa Disney on Instagram. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, there you go. that's totally fine. Yes, is that it? We gonna finish this up? Take us home, baby. This is your show. Take us home. Absolutely. Until next time, guys. Bring your opinions. Bring your feedback, and let's talk about it. Sorry, I had to do that.
<laughs> you gotta do that at least once in your life. Right? <laughs> and this is the stuff we need to have like the video playing, like so people can see the video.